welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Here we go with the Bob Hope Show. This is episode number 508, which originally aired on November 13th, 1951. This is an A-Farts episode and has all the commercials cut out. Now, for those of you who may not have heard me talk about AFARTS before. It's an acronym, and it stands for Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. These are shows recorded from the original broadcast shows, then replayed for service personnel who were serving overseas and other places where they couldn't get the regularly aired shows in the U.S., the military cut out all the commercials. I guess they didn't want our soldiers to su suffer through commercials. I mean, we hate commercials, right? We fast forward them fast <laughs> if we can, or I, if it, I guess unless you're watching broadcast TV or we watch Netflix or whatever. So we don't have to have commercials. I don't know. Maybe that's why they cut them out. Maybe I do. All I know is they cut them out. Here now is Bob Hope with his special guest, Kareem Calve. Show, transcribed with Les Brown and his band of renown, and yours truly, High Everback. Our special guests, Jack Kirkwood, Peggy Lee, Corrine Calvay. And here he is, Bob Hope. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Well, here I am. <laughs> Relatives everywhere. Well, here I am. <laughs> Never before in history have Americans had so many different forms of entertainment. Radio, television, movies. And everybody's so smart about entertainment now. I told my kids a bedtime story the other night. When I was through, they said, Daddy, why don't you fix up the ending and try it on us again tomorrow night? <laughs> When the kids aren't listening to radio and TV, they're reading comic books. Comic books are having an effect on my family. My little nephew runs around the house with a big cigar in his mouth, a hat pulled down over his eyes, and his diapers pulled up under his chin. <laughs> but the comic books are demoralizing the kids. The other day, a two-year-old put a gun to his nurse's back and grunted, who are you buying your pablum from? <laughs> and of course, one of the greatest mediums of entertainment is the drive-in movies. The wonderful thing about them is you're never disappointed. If you don't like the movie and you don't like the girl you're with, you can still have a fascinating evening just by looking in the other cars. <laughs> oh, I see you've all been there, huh? I asked the manager of one drive-in theater, when a heavy fog comes in, do you have to give a refund to the people who leave? He said, who leaves? <laughs> Just proves there's all kinds of entertainment. Say, according to the latest figures, the fastest growing area in the world is a place right here in Los Angeles called the San Fernando Valley. In 1920, the population in the valley was 20,000. Today, it's over half a million. The population has grown so that people in the valley go past pet shops just to sneer at the rabbits. <laughs> No, the growth is phenomenal. Where yesterday there was nothing but a farm, a little house out and back, today there's a family living in the little house out and back. <laughs> of course, most people want to move to the valley on account of its amazing climate. No matter how hot it is in the daytime, at night you can always get pneumonia. And the real estate, the real estate people are selling houses like hotcakes. They have to. That's what they're made of. <laughs> of course, no home in the valley. Are you through with that? <laughs> No home in the valley is complete without a patio with a barbecue. For you Easterners, I'd better explain that a barbecue is an incinerator with a press agent. <laughs> but there's nothing like the satisfaction of owning your own home in the valley. As you stroll through your house and around your land, you get a strange feeling. It's almost as though you hear music. You are. It's the collector from the Bank of America singing, I'm walking behind you. <laughs> A lot of the Hollywood stars have homes in the valley. Gene Autry has a big ranch. In fact, I met Gene just the other day at the general store. He was in buying some hubcaps for his horse. 
Frank Sinatra has a lovely place. You can tell it was built especially for him. He's got the only bathtub with built-in water wings and a soup strainer over the drain. <laughs> but you know, the San Fernando Valley has been written about in songs and books. I'd like to close with this poem written by the Poet Laureate of Burbank. <laughs> he writes, Oh, San Fernando Valley, oh, San Fernando Valley, the whole world stands agog. Where else do the earthquakes rock you to sleep tucked in a blanket of smog? <laughs> Here's one of the really great stylists of the song, the lovely Peggy Lee. Well, you know, I bought this place 15 years ago. Some real estate man really took me. I just found out the whole place is built on a swamp. On a swamp? Are you sure? Yeah, every night a guy walks through my bedroom looking for Chloe. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Well, aside from that, I want to modernize the whole place. I've, I'm even putting in continuous air conditioning. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, the old method wasn't too bad. Oh, Bob, walking around with ice cubes in your mouth, breathing on people. <laughs> Incidentally, on your way in, do you notice that nine-hole golf course I'm having put in? Yes, it looks beautiful. Well, I know it's going to improve my game. When it's finished, I'll really be able to sink that ball. I know. I saw the men putting the magnets in each hole. <laughs> well, we just use those when I play for money. But let me show you around, Peggy. <laughs> oh, I love it, Bob. Bob, what's hmm. all this over here? Oh, those are some new souvenirs for my trophy case. I've collected all kinds of things on my travels. Gosh, look at this. Japanese kimono, an Alaskan totem pole, and a baseball autographed by the Cleveland Indians. No comment. <laughs> well, they did better than Pittsburgh, didn't they? Pittsburgh? Are you kidding? <laughs> they finished so far down, the last team they played were nine gophers. <laughs> and they lost eight to five. <laughs> What's this, Bob? This is priceless. The only one of its kind in the world... And there won't be any more produced. Museums all over the country want this. What is it? Well, here, you read the card. Well, let's see. 
a lock of Bing Crosby's hair. <laughs> oh, Bob. You're always picking on Bing. I think you're jealous. Me jealous of Porky? <laughs> Don't be silly. Why should I be jealous? I can do anything he can do except collect old age compensation. <laughs> Well, Bob, I think I'd better go over the number I'm going to do on the show tonight. Okay, let's find the band. They're here someplace rehearsing. All right. Now, there's the new kitchen, and there's the den. Very nice. And this is the bedroom. Glory! <laughs> See what I mean? You know, Bob, I always enjoy singing with Les Brown. Oh, yeah, he's got a fine band. They're mm -hmm. such hard workers, always rehearsing to get that wonderful music. I think they're in this room. I raise you five bucks. <laughs> I raise you five bucks. Okay, I call. What have you got? I got five jacks. What have you got? I got three jacks. That makes eight jacks. Something's wrong. Why? They're only supposed to be six. <laughs> Somebody deal. Now, wait a minute. This poker game's been going on for a month. It's disrupting the whole show. How do you figure, Dad? What? <laughs> oh, no, this couldn't happen to me. <laughs> look, every time I look at you, you're playing poker. Not only that, you drag people into your game. That's a lie. This is a private game. No strangers allowed. Are you sure? Sure. Well, okay. I raise you five bucks, General Harkins. And I raise you five. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. This is a man who thinks with his heart His heart is not always wise This is a man who stumbles and falls But this is a man who tries This is a man you forgive and forgive And help and protect as long as you you 
Oh, Bob. Yeah, hi. A uh, truck just delivered these packages for you. Oh, it must be the stuff I ordered for the house. Let's see. Well, uh, w- what's in the other package, Bob? Oh, those are the new draperies. It's a brand new idea. The colors match the human skin. Here, I'll wrap them around myself and hold them up to my skin. You can see. There. I beg your pardon. Well, as I live and breathe, Gloria Swanson. <laughs> Well, who are you? I'm the building inspector for the Contractors Association, boy. Jack C. Kirkwood's my name. Kirkwood? Kirkwood? Didn't I read that a Jack Kirkwood was arrested for swindling this week? Oh, no. That's Jack P. Kirkwood. I'm Jack C. Kirkwood. People have been making that mistake all week long, thinking I was a swindler. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not, eh? No. I wonder how they caught Dad. So you're the building inspector, eh? That's right, boy I work for the Happy Homes Contractors Association Every day I get in my Cadillac and I take... Uh, Now, wait a minute, wait, wait You're just a building inspector and you drive a Cadillac? You must be loaded What? Loaded? Yeah, but I'll try not to breathe on you (laughs) Well, I better get started Not so fast I don't know whether I can trust you around my home Oh Boy. <laughs> what a vulgar allegation. <laughs> Why, I've inspected the homes of many stars sitting in front of the fireplace serving subpoenas on each other. <laughs> well, I, I guess you're okay. Why, of course I am. Now, first of all, boy, who's your contractor? Well, I don't know whether you've heard of him, Jerry Colonna. Oh, yes, Colonna. Know him well. We have the same probation officer. <laughs> is, uh, is he around? No, no, he had a nasty accident yesterday. He was installing the sink, and his mustache got caught in the garbage disposal unit. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. No, it isn't. No, a fishing boat picked him up off Santa Monica. <laughs> Fishing boat. <laughs> oh, that's champion. <laughs> But he'll be here next week. Fine. Now, the main thing I'll do today is to check for fire hazards. Then I'll spend the rest of the month on the other thing. A month? Can't you do it any quicker? Well, there is one thing that would speed me up. You think about it for a minute. I'll just look out the window. Wait a minute. What are you, what are you talking about? Oh, well, there's a fine-looking garden. It's so green. <laughs> What a spot to grow lettuce. (laughs) I just love lettuce. And look at those birds in your garden. What large bills they have. (laughs) Oh, I get it. You want money. My, but you're (laughs) bright. I can see the sun shining right through the hole in your head. (laughs) Say, Fatty, you can go to jail for taking... You can go to jail for taking money. How much am I offered? <laughs> ten bucks? Hmm, hardly worth going to jail for ten dollars, boy. Fifty? No. A hundred? Cash? Yeah. Warden, I'd like a cell with running water, please. <laughs> See you later, boy. I'm going to start checking for fire. <laughs> what a pest he's going to be. Come in. Hello, Bob. Well, Kareen Calvay. Look at this. See, you look wonderful, Corrine. Well, thank you, Bob. I see they're still fixing your house. Golly, it's so upside down. You look just great, honey. <laughs> the whole house is in need of repair. Oh. Bob, do you have trouble with your plumbing? Uh. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I think you're wonderful. <laughs> Welcome to the club. By the way, uh... By the way, Queen, how'd you know I was having this work done on my house? Well, I live only one block from here, and when I go out to take a sand bath, I hear the noise. You live a block from here and you go out to take sand baths? That's right. No wonder. Yesterday, three of the workmen quit and started digging a tunnel. (laughs) Yes, I saw you with a shovel. (laughs) 
Well, well, the house will be finished soon, and I think it'll appeal to you. It's going to have that continental flavor, you know, Trey Charmon, Trey Magnifique, Trey Hildegard, and a tray of hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> know you could talk French? Just enough to get myself arrested. <laughs> Were you not recently in Paris? As a matter of fact, I were. And, uh, <laughs> France is really all they say it was. Yes, la belle France. Oh, my country suffered, suffered a lot, a great deal. You know what I mean. <laughs> the night is all right. <laughs> Want to try it over? You just want to leave it there. <laughs> go ahead. Have another go, girl. Go ahead. Oh, yes, La Belle France. My country suffered a great deal. How are you doing? But now nice. it's all right. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, we had a wonderful time over there. You know, I entertained in France. I did quite a few shows there. You did? Yes. Oh, my country still suffers. <laughs> But I don't care what you say, Corrine. I uh, say, boy, I was just checking for fire hazards and a... Oh! <laughs> French pastry. <laughs> Kirkwood! Now, wait a minute, boy. Say, aren't you the lady who takes the sun baths down the street? Yes, I am. Do you know me? Oh, oui. If you're the Francais qui dit mot dans les maisons blanches... Oui, c'est moi. Pourquoi me demandez-vous? Si vous pensez bien jolie, je voudrais faire notre reconnaissance. Oui, bien sûr. Peut-être pourrions-nous devenir amis? Ah, merci, madame. Merci. Corinne, what's he saying to you? He too is digging a tunnel. <laughs> Look, Kirkwood, stick to business, will you? I am, boy. And I want to tell you all your doors must be removed. They're fire hazards. Well, you leave those doors alone. They're specially built out of pickled pine. What'd you say? I said pickled. Yes, I am. I found your liquor closet. <laughs> Kirkwood, get lost, will you? We've got to rehearse the radio show. Please don't bother us anymore. Okay, boy. Bob, is Peggy Lee here yet? Yes, yeah, she's somewhere around here. Peggy! Yes, Bob? Oh, hello, Corinne. Hello, Peggy. How have you been, Corinne? Fine. Oh, I love your dress. It's so cute. Say, uh, girls, why Thank don't we... Thank you. It's a new net skirt that can be worn with a tight bodice or sheer wool turtleneck. Uh, say, uh, I... I've got the cutest new nylon tool apron skirt that's worn with a waist cincher. I got a new Captain Video Space Patrol suit. <laughs> and I love... Just won't quit. The... That's oh, all. I love the new padded hip line. Crazy. Just tons of petticoats. Say, girls, let's break it up, huh? Sorry, Bob. I think we better start rehearsing for the show. Oh, are we going to do a sketch, Bob? Yeah, I thought we'd do a scene from My Favorite Spy. Don't you play the lead in that, Bob? Well, it's really a double lead. I play the part of a real baggy pants burlesque comic, and then I also play the part of an international spy who is suave, intelligent, dashing, reckless, and very handsome. Well, you must be great as a burlesque comic. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's rehearse the scene where I've just stolen some secret plans from you, Peggy, and you, Corrine, are making love to me in order to get the plans. Okay, let's get started, Corrine. Oh, Eric, darling, I just had to see you tonight. Hey, say, boy, I got to talk to you. About Kirkwood, something. sit down, will you? <laughs> We're having a very important rehearsal. Please keep quiet. All right, Corrine. Oh, Eric, darling, I just had to see you tonight. Control yourself, you mad young thing. You I waited for you, darling, needed you. Your eyes. Your lips, to feel your strong arms around me once again. Kiss me, darling. <laughs> Let the spark of my love inflame you. Oh, my love. I... Kirkwood, put Miss Calvey down. <laughs> Kirkwood, what are you doing? I got a remover, boy. This girl's a fire hazard. <laughs> Reminding you to be tuned in next week for another visit with Bob Hope. Corinne Calvet was born Corinne Debos in 1925 in Paris, France. She had to flee Paris when the Nazis invaded during World War II. She acted in both French and American movies, but never hit the big time to become an A-list star. But she was French and she was beautiful, so she did have a couple of dozen film credits to her name 
and some TV guest appearances. Corrine Calvet died in 2001. She was 76. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Wednesday for another episode of The Bob Hope Show, and check in on Friday for the next installment of The Life of Riley. Until we meet again, in the words of James Clear, feel compliments as deeply as you feel insults.